Hey, welcome to Janktown. Will here and today we'll be doing another video on the Lord of the Rings scene cards that were recently spoiled. Now if you guys aren't familiar, these are gonna be coming in the holiday season and they'll be part of these four different types of bundles and you'll be getting six cards guaranteed. Kind of like how the One Ring, Gollum, Frodo, and Sam were all part of the OG bundle during the Tales of Middle-earth set. So we've covered the Gandalf set, we've covered the Witch King set. Today we'll be talking about the Aragorn set. We won't be going over Aragorn himself, but instead we'll be talking about the five other cards that come with him. If this sounds good to you though, I hope you can leave a like, share, and subscribe, and we'll get straight into these cards. Now I am using a rating scale that kind of covers across either is the card niche or is it uh, more or less a staple as well as rating the power level of the cards. So let's start and rate the first card in the Aragorn set which is Andril Narsal Reforged. I think I remember this. It's a two mana value equipment with Ascend. Whenever equipped creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. And if we have the city's blessing, put two plus one plus one counters on each creature we control instead. Equip three. All right, so this is pretty strong. I remember, yeah, I remember this card now. This is kind of like Cathar's Crusade, but with less of the math. And it's really good. So I read it then and I thought it was good. I'm reading it now and it's still really good. It's not that niche as long as you have creatures, it's still good. If, even if you're a Voltron, whether or, or you're going wide, it's still really good. If you're going for extra combat, it's really good. So it's kind of stately, I'd say. Um, and it's also really powerful. It's one of, it sounds like one of the premier uh, finisher types of cards, in, in especially whether equipment, creature base, go wide, go tall, whatever, like it does its thing. Probably gonna be one of the better cards in your deck if, if you're running Anduril. All right, up next we have Legolas's Quick Reflexes. It's a one mana value instant with split second. All right, not counterable, you can't react to this. Untap target creature. Until end of turn, it gains Hexproof, Reach, and whenever this creature becomes tapped, it deals damage equal to its power to up to one target creature. Huh, the untap is nice, it's kind of like a surprise blocker. Uh, hexproof reach also good because you get to save a creature. The reach means you can surprise a flyer coming in. How relevant is this last ability? You gotta have a tap ability or I don't know, man. I'm not super sold on this. I think it has its uses. I'd say it's about mid power. Maybe sometimes it might not even make it in your deck. There are better green protection spells. Uh, Once you just give Hexproof Indestructible, things like this. It is nice that it's split second, but I mean, even split second is, is neither here nor there. For you to want it, it kind of probably is in a niche. I mean, it can go in many decks just to protect your guy. But even then, if you're just using it to protect, then it even lowers in, in value. You're either in this type of thing that can tap. Maybe you have something like one Cryptolith right or something that can just let your creatures tap for mana. That is if you want to shoot something down. So maybe not that niche because I mean, it is pretty versatile. Uh, not that weak, but it kind of gets outclassed. Maybe I think over here is, 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 a, is a good spot for it. All right, up next we have Gimli's Reckless. Oh, okay, Gimli. We got Legolas, we got Gimli. We got the Fellowship going on here. Gimli's Reckless Might, four mana value enchantment. Creatures we control have haste. So usually we only have to pay three for this effect. So this next paragraph better be good. Whenever we attack, if creatures we control have total power eight or greater, target attacking creature we control fights up to one target creature we don't control. All right, so there's removal tacked onto it. I'd say this is pretty good. Four mana value. Uh, if we have something with death touch. Oh no, it fights. It'll, it'll probably take down our death toucher too. But yeah, if, if you have, like let's say you're running Gruul and you have some big creatures, maybe you're running Xenagos or something. I'd say this is pretty good. So yeah, let, let's move it up in, in the power. I think it's pretty stapley um, or We'd probably want to see it. It does pretty good on its own, probably here. Wow, some pretty good value in this Aragorn set so far. I mean, Haste does have some value. Probably not as much value as just like outright the Anduril, but it's pretty good. And the fact that it's an enchantment and therefore you probably have access to removal at all times without it having to consume more cards uh, outside of the creatures you're already playing and attacking with. And you don't need to be attacking with all eight power either. So if you just have one big beater, you could attack with that, have your other creatures sort of add up to that eight. It's pretty good, pretty good I'd say. All right, next card. 
Isengard Unleashed. Ah, break from the Fellowship. All right, it's five mana value, triple pips. Okay, sorcery. Damage cannot be prevented this turn. If a sorcery control would deal damage this turn to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals triple that damage. Seven for flashback. So it's gotta be in red or heavy red, which makes sense. But it's not just the next source. It's if a source this turn would deal damage to an opponent, it deals triple. Wow. So I'd say this is pretty niche. It only really works for like burn decks or, or red heavy decks. And at the same time, you gotta be dealing damage elsewhere. Five mana value can be a bit steep. But I guess if you're winning through combat or, or some other way, or you're running rituals, I, I'd say it's pretty niche actually. You gotta set the conditions right for this. It's a finisher for sure. I'd say it's pretty powerful and a pretty good finisher. Not as good as the other one, but I'd say it's pretty high power. Um, but it's pretty niche, and I mean, if you move it all the way back here in terms of niche, it, it's really like, you, you gotta be playing for that damage thing. How good is Dictate of the Twin Gods? In the right deck, it's pretty powerful, I'd say. Like an Imidane or, or whatever other deck. Nexar maybe? Does that deal damage? I forget. This is sorcery though, I guess that kinda loses a bit of it. So maybe we move it down a bit. The sorcery does hurt. At 5 mana value, it's still pretty accessible. I think it's better than the Fiery Emancipation one, even though that deals triple damage and it's an enchantment. Alright, last card is Rohirrim Chargers. 4 mana value, 4-4. Four, four. You may exert Rohirrim Chargers as it attacks. Whenever you exert a creature, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an equipment. Put that card onto the battlefield attached to that creature, then put the rest at the bottom in a random order. It's pretty niche, I'd say. You... Either need to run other exert creatures or you're exerting this one. I kind of hate the exert mechanic because you're kind of stunning your own stuff. If you are running just one equipment though, I'd say this can be really good. Like let's say you're a Sunforger deck, you can always find your Sunforger then. But then that said, it's pretty niche. It's kind of like a tutor but like a fake one. Not that good, I'd say. You might run it. It sounds pretty mid. I guess if you could untap this through some other way, like with Sting or something, maybe. Boros does love its equipment, so maybe it's not that niche as I think as, it's, or <laughs> as it was originally. But I'd say this is more like a glue card, something you'd probably actually run fairly consistently. So I'd move it up here. Feels like glue. For the cast, 4-4, four, four, so it's a decent body. You know what, maybe I move the battle maze actually a bit down. A lot of effects, but it's just really expensive. The chargers, I, I'd say, pretty decent. Pretty decent overall. So that's it. I think those are the five cards for the Aragorn set. Um, pretty decent, I'd say. It's a good haul as well, especially if you like these play styles. They are a bit more niche, except for the um, the Haste Gimli one, as well as the Sword. But hey, I mean, a lot of value. I am not the biggest fan of Aragorn the Commander himself. I think Renowned is just way too niche. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Am I overrating some of these cards? I mean, they all did rank pretty highly. That's three videos down, one to go. I will be covering Galadriel as well in our next video. If you like this, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And until next time, stay inspired, friends, and I'll see you soon.